This is Colin O'Keefe here with today's episode of LXBN TV. The SEC recently handed out a whopping $30 million to a whistleblower, the largest such reward on record. Joining me now to explain what happened and share his thoughts on this staggering sum is attorney David Smith. He's with Brooks Pierce, an author on the firm's blog, Katie Bar the Door. Uh, David, first, what's the story here? Why, why $30 million? Sure. Well, as with almost all of these awards, we don't know much of anything about uh, exactly what went into it. We, we really know only the factors um, that the commission uses to consider. So th the reason for that is the, the SEC is committed to keeping the identity of their whistleblowers confidential. They don't want uh, retaliatory blowback if they can help it. And so they've, they've gone to fairly extreme degrees to, pr to protect those identities. So we know that by statute, the commission is ordered to give between 10 to 30 percent of the amount collected from a successful enforcement action. And a number of factors go into deciding how much that, that, that figure will be. It includes the, the law enforcement interest, which could be a little bit of a circular factor, uh, the significance of the information, the amount of the assistance the whistleblower brought, and whether the whistleblower reported internally first. Um, conversely, I guess, if the, if the whistleblower somehow interfered with uh, a company's internal compliance process or um, w was somehow culpable in the, in the underlying conduct or uh, caused unreasonable delay in reporting, which actually happened in this case, the, the award could have even been larger, um, that will tend to, to drop the amount of an award. But 10 to 30 percent is the range. Wow, yeah, it really is uh, quite quite the windfall for these whistleblowers. So uh, a second, this is, of course, a, a international whistleblower as well. So uh, are there any issues with the extraterritorial nature to this reward? I know this is an issue uh, that you raise in your blog post on the topic. Well, the SEC hopes not, and it is relying fairly heavily on whistleblowers overseas to bring cases that, that have some some uh, that, that, that touch jurisdiction abroad. They, in particular, hope that uh, that overseas whistleblowers will, will give the SEC a window into Foreign Corrupt Practices Act violations that are hard to investigate on their own. Um, so the, the commission made a point in a very long footnote in this most recent award to say that its position is that the bounty provisions do apply overseas, even though a recent Second Circuit case in Lou versus Siemens held that the anti-retaliation provisions do not apply to whistleblowers that are overseas. So that's a that's a fight that may be on the horizon. Um, it, it it may be a fight that has a hard time finding two two willing participants because in in most of the cases. Um, the commission is going to want to pay these awards to encourage other whistleblowers to come forward. The whistleblowers obviously will want to receive the awards, and uh, th there may not be a, a natural opponent. Um, in the in the in the Lou case, you know, there was a company that did not want to be held liable for violating the anti-retaliation provisions. Um, I, I think that companies probably should consider how much comfort they could gather from the Lou case because. If they if they take it as a lesson that they can retaliate against their whistleblowers who are, who are outside the United States, you know they may create an environment where employees don't want to work there and want to work for other other competitors instead. Absolutely, absolutely, it could uh, give the impression of of a certain level of, of malfeasance uh, potentially. I would guess. Uh, once again. That was David Smith of Brooks Pierce. To read more of his insight on this case and others in the area, be sure to visit katiebarthedoor.com. It's C-A-D-Y, barthedoor.com. Thank you for joining me today, David. Thanks, Colin.